This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful presence and run your business. Welcome back everyone. In this video, I want to share a lens with you today. This is the recently announced Sigma 28 to 70 millimeter DG DN contemporary lens. This comes in both Sony E mount as well as L mount versions. I have to point something out though. So while I was working on this review for you guys, turns out, so Sigma have announced that they have put a delay on the release of this lens. They have found a ghosting resistance deterioration issue. I assume what that means is that with age, it's probably something to do with the lens coating. Totally guessing here, but there's a deterioration where you're going to have ghosting problems later on down the line. Now, first of all, hats off to Sigma for at least coming clean with this and being transparent. I think that is very cool. I've also worked with Sigma a couple times and every time that I've worked with them and had a chance to speak to people who work for Sigma, they take what they do very seriously and I'm sure they'll be able to get this resolved. They're saying it's about a month, but I'm not gonna let that stop us today. I don't have that problem with this lens. It's not that old, so there's no deterioration. And actually, um, I wanna share some of the characteristics and stuff with you. We're gonna look at some images. I actually really like this lens. So this is a 28 to 70 millimeter, and we typically think of 24 to 70 as being the classic utility zoom length. So why do we start at 28? Well, this is part of Sigma's Contemporary series, which offers pretty high quality optics, but you're gonna get these at reasonable price points. There's usually a trade-off, so it's usually wider apertures, but in this case, we get the 2.8 lens, but the trade-off is those two millimeters on the wide end of the zoom. This lens uses 16 elements in 12 groups. There are three aspherical, two FLD and two SLD elements. So this gets us to a lens which is optically excellent. It comes in a smaller package, it's lightweight, and it comes at a reasonable price. So a premium 24 to 70 millimeter will probably be at or over the $2,000 range, and this one is $899 USD. The strongest feature in this lens for me is subject separation, and this happens with bokeh, but it is also how contrast is rendered with the lens. Micro contrast is absolutely exceptional, and at all focal lengths, when you're at close to medium distances, you get a really nice isolation of the subject that's in focus. The standard bokeh is really nice as well. It is a gorgeous look and this is really the main reason that I like this lens. A wide aperture prime will give you more of a creamy look and even more separation, but I really like the look that we're getting on the Sigma. In fact, contrast is really handled overall really well. There's almost no flaring, there's no ghosting problems, even when you're shooting right into the sun. You can get sun stars, I wouldn't say that they're really the strong suit of this lens. In the last year or so, one of the things I've been doing in lens reviews is I've been looking at a field of focus map. This is something that I make. I explain this in other videos, but essentially if we go outside and we take a picture of something that is flat, that has texture, in this case it's the asphalt on the street, we're going to use the find edges filter in Photoshop and we get essentially a view of the field of focus. Now to do this with a zoom lens, we're actually going to take a couple images across the focal range. So I did one at 28, I did one at 50, and I did one at 70. So when you compare these, you can start to see how this lens is going to behave across that entire range. I want to note that the standard 24 to 70 is usually prone to field curvature. This is probably one advantage that we've got because the design here starts at 28 millimeters on the wide end and you can see that it's really flat. It actually stays flat as you move up to 70 millimeters. It's going to be the sharpest as you can see here at 28 millimeters, but I think it's still acceptable throughout the entire focal range. One of the things that you see in all three of these images is that there is a little corner sharpness fall off and that's kind of to be expected. This is gonna affect you depending on what you're shooting. So if you want tack sharp landscapes, this lens, I'm gonna be honest, is probably not the lens for you. But if you're shooting portraits, more general use kinds of things, I highly recommend this lens. It's got a really cool look to it. So while this lens has some really good things going for it, there are a few things that I wanna nitpick on. So we'll get to that but real quick. I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor today who are the awesome folks over at squarespace.com. Squarespace is the easiest way to build a website, photo gallery, or online store without having to write a single line of code. Start with one of their gorgeous templates, use their drag and drop interface, build your brand online. But Squarespace is way more than just a way to build a website. Squarespace provides an amazing set of tools to create revenue and run a business. Squarespace now features dedicated member areas, allowing you to connect with your audience and generate revenue through members only content. You can manage members, you can send them email communications, and you can can leverage audience insights. Building an e-commerce site couldn't be any easier, and Squarespace now also supports collecting donations. So you can get support for a cause or charity by gathering contributions with PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo, 
and build your audience using social sharing. The Squarespace blogging platform has a sharing button that you can customize that's going to allow sharing on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, StumbleUpon, Reddit, Pinterest, and Tumblr. So head over to Squarespace for a free trial. Once you feel that Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your first order by using offer code AOP on checkout or just use the link below this video. Once again, that offer code is AOP and I wanna give a special shout out and thanks to the awesome folks at Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So there's no such thing as the perfect lens and of course this complicates it when it's a zoom lens but there are a few things that I do want to point out because they're just not the strengths of this lens. So first of all, the minimum focus distance on this lens is very short. You can get some almost macro looking images on here. So at 28 millimeters, it's going to be 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters. And then when you zoom out to 70, this increases to 1.25 feet or 38 centimeters. It's useful, but I have to say the image really starts to fall apart. You get a lot of chromatic aberrations, both purple fringing and green fringing that start to show up. I just don't think that this lens is suited for really close focusing. It does improve your depth of field. So if you want to knock out a background, you can get closer to your subject, but just know that your image quality starts to suffer also. That separation and isolation of your subject that I love so much that I was talking about earlier, this looks great when your subject is up to about 20, 30 feet away. Beyond that, you don't get the separation nearly as clearly, which is to be expected. And the bokeh starts to take on a real nervous quality. So this lens is kind of dependent on that separation between a subject and a background to get that look. This is not a situation that's typical in photography, so it's not something that you're likely gonna have to deal with very often, but I do want it pointed out. Finally, the out of focus areas look really great, but if you're in a rare situation where you have back focus, in other words, the foreground of the image is what's out of focus, those out of focus areas near the camera don't render anywhere nearly as smoothly, so be very careful of your lighting and what you're doing. Now, these observations are pretty nitpicky, but I wanted to be fair and mention them. Sigma have given us a really interesting alternative to the classic utility zoom lens. It's a little bit shorter on the wide end, but I think it gives us a really unique look that makes this lens really stand out. I love what they're doing with this contemporary series. So this is very different than their art series. The contemporary series is more budget conscious. They're not as rock and roll in terms of the wide apertures that you're able to get. Usually there's something you have to give up. In this case, it's those two millimeters on the wide end. But I think this is a really good alternative to a lot of lenses that are available at really high price points. Another lens that I've used in this contemporary series that I actually really liked is the 40 millimeter. Um, I think it's outstanding. The other cool thing about these is the DGDN initials in the designation on the name. This basically means this was designed for mirrorless. And so I think what's cool is that Sigma are being able to get a little bit creative in terms of the lenses that they're designing and what they're able to do when we don't have the mirror box and they're taking advantage of that. They're coming in and they're actually solving things that we weren't able to solve before, which is getting a really good look at a really low price. So love to know what you guys think as well. So drop me a comment below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.